Consider a bar with an axial load of 200 kN played at point P. The given data is area of cross section 1 2400 mm square, Young's modulus 70 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square. Area of cross section of section 2 600 mm square and Young's modulus 200 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square. Find the values. Number 1 the nodal displacement at point P, number 2, stress at each material, and number 3, reaction force. Every finite element analysis starts with discretizing the whole beam into number of finite elements. So let's start with the discretizing our beam. We have two different cross sections, so let's divide the whole beam into two elements. Let's name the elements, element 1 and element 2. Each element consists of two nodes. So we have total of three nodes. Length, area and Young's modulus of each elements are given. We have converted the Young's modulus into Newton per millimeter square as other dimensions of elements were given in millimeter. Let's start with the first question, displacement at point P. We have the finite element equation for any element in terms of force and displacement, that means F equal to KU. So let's write down the finite element equation for element number 1, force matrix F1, F2 equal to stiffness matrix of element number 1, E1, A1 by L1 into 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. The displacement matrix U1, U2. Element 1 consists of node 1 and 2. That's why the force and displacement values are 1 and 2. Substituting the values, Young's modulus 70 into 10 raised to 3, area 2400 and length 300, matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and displacement matrix U1, U2. The value is 5.6 into 10 raised to 5. 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 u1 u2 let's rewrite the finite element equation as 10 raised to 5 in common force matrix f1 f2 equal to 10 raised to 5 into 5.6 minus 5.6 minus 5.6 5.6 into u1 u2 let it be the equation number 1 Let's write down the finite element equation for element 2. Element 2 consists of nodes 2 and 3, so all the term will be of 2 and 3. First, force matrix F2, F3, which is equal to stiffness matrix of element number 2, E2, A2 by L2, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. Displacement matrix U2, U3. Substituting the values, Young's modulus 200 into 10 raised to 3, area 600, and length 400. Matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. Displacement U2, U3. This equation yields 3 into 10 raised to 5, 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. U2, U3. Rewriting the finite element equation. 10 raised to 5 as common, 10 raised to 5 into 3 minus 3 minus 3 3, u2, u3. Let it be the equation number 2. Let's assemble the finite element equation of element number 1 and element number 2. We have already gone through the assembling the finite element equation in previous videos. First with the force matrix. Assembled matrix F1, F2 and F3, a column matrix. 
which is equal to assembling the stiffness matrix 10 raised to 5 as common element number 1 5.6 minus 5.6 minus 5.6 5.6 and for element number 2 3 minus 3 minus 3 3 fill up the remaining portions with 0 the middle value that means the assembled value will be 5.6 plus 3 that means 8.6 displacement matrix u1 u2 and u3 let it be the equation number 3 to find the unknown values we have to apply the boundary conditions of each elements applying boundary conditions in final assembled matrix let's look at the boundary conditions as per the problem force at node 1 and node 3 are 0 because there were no details about the force applied at node 1 and node 3 force at node 2 equal to 200 kilo newton that means 200 into 10 raised to 3 newton displacement at node 1 and 3 are 0 as per the problem both the ends that means node 1 and node 3 were fixed applying the boundary conditions in force matrix f1 0 f2 2 into 10 raised to 5 f3 0 and stiffness matrix for the displacement matrix u1 and u3 are 0 u2 is an unknown value we can see that the values of u1 and u3 are 0 so we can omit the values of first and third row and column values of stiffness matrix when we considering the values of first and third row and column we will get the zero values for the force which yields 2 into 10 raised to 5 equal to 8.6 into 10 raised to 5 u2 from that equation we can find the value of u2 as 0 0.2326 millimeter The second question was stress in each material. We have the relation stress equal to Young's modulus into change in length by original length for every element. So stress in element number 1 equal to sigma 1 equal to E1 into change in length U2 minus U1 divided by L1. Substituting the values. which yields 54.25 newton per millimeter square we got the value as positive so we can take it as tension now let's find the stress in element number 2 we have the equation sigma 2 equal to e2 into change in length that means u3 minus u2 divided by l2 substituting the values we will get minus 116.25 newton per millimeter square as we got the value as negative we can take it as a compression third question was the reaction force at every nodes the relation for reaction force is the reaction force matrix equal to stiffness matrix into displacement matrix which is equal to the force minus the force matrix Let's write the corresponding matrices. The reaction matrices R1, R2, R3 equal to stiffness matrix. Displacement matrix U1, U2, U3 minus the force matrix.
the product of stiffness matrix and displacement matrix will be minus 1.302 1.9995 minus 0.6975 minus the force matrix 0 2 into 10 raised to 5 0 which yields the matrix minus 1.302 into 10 raised to 5 0 minus 0 0.6975 into 10 raised to 5 These three values will be the reaction at every nodes. That means reaction at node 1 will be minus 1.302 into 10 raised to 5. Reaction at node 2 will be 0. And reaction at node 3 will be minus 0 0.6975. We know that the reaction force will be equivalent magnitude and opposite direction with the applied force. In this problem, the applied force was 200 kilonewton that means 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton and we got the total reaction force as minus 1.302 into 10 raised to 5 plus minus 0 0.6975 into 10 raised to 5 which yields a total of minus 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton that means the total reaction force is equal and opposite to the applied force